<laughs> this is a video I actually made months ago. Back then, I was in kind of a dark period in my life, being that I was mildly disgruntled. And therefore, the voiceover didn't turn out very good. Now, the problem was, was that I already deleted my gameplay footage, so even if I'd re-recorded the voiceover, I couldn't go back and just edit the new video. Cause you know, if I would've opened Sony Vegas, it would've been all like, Oh, the files are missing! Ooh, my pussy! So that wouldn't work. Um, so what I did instead was just dump the video on my second channel and just be all like, Yeah, go figure it out, motherfuckers. Fuck this fucking video. But then I started thinking like, well, fuck, if I review Yakuza 3 and then people from the future will come and watch my playlist or whatever the fuck and they'll be like, wow, this motherfucker just reviewed Yakuza 1 but skipped 2, even though that's the best one. What a cunt. And, and you know, I don't want people to think that, that I'm a cunt because that's not true. Why, why would you ever think that? And to top it all off, fucking pink guy of all people came along and asked if I could redo the video and I was like, well, you know what, I might as fucking, I, I might as well do it, so, yeah. If this video seems off, it's because I re-recorded the voiceover and then just kind of overlaid the original finished edited product and then kind of like redid the audio. Uh, so I just kind of crammed it in there, I guess. Anyway, yeah, this has gone on for long enough, so without further ado, I've been playing Yakuza 2. <laughs> hey, that rhymed! <laughs> The story of Yakuza 2 once again follows the man with the dragon tattoo himself, Kazuma Kiryu. And this time a Yakuza family from another city has started to fuck up shit in Komurocho. This family is slowly being taken over by younger and more ruthless Yakuza, led by a man who just so happens to have a dragon tattoo as well. And he wants to turn Komurocho into a sea of fire. And of course, Kazuma is the only motherfucker man enough to do something about it. Now, while the story does have plenty of reoccurring characters and locations, it's still pretty much its own story with a beginning and an end. It keeps the series from committing a Metal Gear or Kingdom Hearts by fucking itself over with acres of sequel baggage. Though that isn't to say that it's playable without having played the first game, but at least you get a functional story with proper arcs and buildups instead of cliffhangers, padding and filler. But, unlike the first game, Yakuza 2 did not receive an English dub. It's fully localized and everything, and all the text is in English. But the voice acting remains in its original Japanese, which will probably turn some people off, and I can totally see why. But I'd also argue that, considering the quality of the first game's dub, it's probably better off like this. I mean, it's a game taking place in Japan, featuring a cast consisting out of nothing but Japanese people. So it would make sense just from that standpoint alone. And it doesn't bother me either way, as the quality of the writing is even better than what it was, and the characters still look and sound just like how I remember them, despite them having different voices now. So yeah, that's good, I guess. Gameplay-wise though, the game remains largely unchanged, only slightly tweaking and improving on some things to simply make shit flow and play a lot better. So, it's still an open-worldy, explore-y, talky, light RPG-y, beat em up -y kind of game. You still go on side quests and interact with people, and you still beat up punks that you encounter randomly. It's just about exactly the same game structurally, and I don't want to go over all of it again besides a small setup what I did just now, as I don't want to sound like a broken record. While the game does look almost identical, in fact, I could probably get away with sneaking in some Yakuza 1 footage and no one would notice, maybe I have, it does have quite a different atmosphere, mostly because of the newly added Kansai District and the now rather jazzy soundtrack. 
And because this new district is modeled after Osaka, everyone in Kansai swears like a fucking sailor. Just talking to all of the random NPCs is quite a lot of fun when you hear people talking about shit like explosion fetishes. The game overall though is much, much more stylish and the tone is fucking perfect as well. The soundtrack, the cinematography, the characters and even the look of the little restaurants and bars really paint a very different picture than the first game did despite it looking very similar at first glance. I think a big contributor to that is the fact that the previous game's district, Kamurocho, is still fully intact. And uh, sadly, a vast majority of the game still takes place here, as the Kansai district is rather tiny in comparison. And that's exactly the thing. While the game does make some minor changes that made me enjoy this a lot more than the first one, it also keeps a lot of the same flaws and technical issues. And while going back to Komorocho and having it feel like you're just playing the first game again does highlight just how well they've made Kansai seem distinctive, I can't help but feel like they just could have done a little bit more to set these two games apart from a gameplay standpoint. I mean, things like the laggy camera transitions, the extremely awkward to navigate corridors, and the horrible ass fuck camera are all still present and accounted for. So, it is a good thing then, that the area they've improved most of all is the combat system. And holy fucking shit boys is it gone. You see, what they did is simply speed things up a little and make it so that Kazuma can now actually hit things that are behind him. This pretty much takes away all of the stiffness and makes the combat a lot more visceral. And while it certainly still is far from perfect, they even tweaked the lock-on slightly so it can actually differentiate between a chair and a person. So, those awkward moments where everything fell completely flat because Kazuma was being a douche are now mostly gone. And to make it even better, Heat Mode now has these super duper attacks that will activate once Kazuma gets super hype. In fact, the whole heat mechanic thing has been improved upon greatly overall. Thing is, is that filling up your heat bar by doing things other than just beating up dudes are now finally explored a bit more. Which makes it a lot easier to keep your heat bar topped up, especially against large groups of enemies. Though, the game still does suffer from a very slight case of Sonic the Hedgehog syndrome. What I mean with that is that in Sonic games, going fast and being good at it makes the game a lot of fun to play. But doing poorly, even if it is your own fault, turns the game into a janky, messy mess with awkward level design and shitty controls. And Yakuza 2 does this as well. While you're doing all sorts of awesome combos, stringing together heat mode moves like a motherfucker, the game's combat really is pretty close to resembling what I'd imagine the best thing ever could be like. But <laughs> when you're not doing that, like during certain bosses, because it's still impossible to cancel animations, the game becomes a slow, janky pile of shit with a horrible camera and still pretty laggy controls. Though the game does do a lot more to prevent that from happening than its predecessor, and the combat already being much faster to begin with, makes it so that even at its lowest, it's still not as low as it was in the first game. But it's just not exactly amazing when it does happen. And I honestly feel like the combat system could really do with a few more ways of keeping your heat up, and maybe a better camera and a way to opt out of combos once you notice that Kazuma went off in the wrong direction again. Oh, that Kazuma is such a nasty little boy. Always disobeying daddy's orders. As for all the dicking around town segments though, they decided to spice things up a little by adding a shit ton of fetch quests. And while that might not sound like much, they were weird and varied enough for me to keep shit interesting. One fetch quest for instance as you scout around town to pick up beer and panties because Japan. But on the other hand, while most of these are optional, I can still see a lot of people being put off by them. I mean, I don't mind personally as I like running around the districts and fighting dudes, but if that isn't really your thing then I highly doubt you'd enjoy walking through the same handful of streets looking for a roll of toilet paper. And also, it's not like they're particularly challenging as it's always fairly obvious where you need to go. So. In that sense, I can see it being a bit tedious for some. But if you're like me and you 
don't mind for whatever fucking reason, then I'd say that the optional fetch quests are totally worth doing. Not just because of the extra experience points, but mostly because of them always contributing to the overall plot in some way. Like, usually in open world Z-type games, the side quests are just that. A thing on the side. Here though, that's not so much the case, as the seemingly redundant little side stories end up adding quite a lot. And I'd still say that that's definitely worth the investment to get a greater appreciation of the story. Not an understanding, mind you, shit's totally fine without it, but the emotional connection to the world and its characters becomes much, much greater the more time you spend in it. And the side quests are just an easy way for the game to encourage you to do so. <coughs> Despite some minor flaws being carried over, I'd still say that this is a better game in every single way. I mean, it is a bit on the long side, but to me it never really felt like it was. Of course, a big part of that has to do with my own personal tastes aligning with whatever the fuck is going on here. But it's also paced and structured in such a way that nothing ever becomes too tedious, given that this is the type of game that you're into. As I said, if you don't like long cutscenes or fetch quests, then this probably ain't your cup of tea. But if you do like games like Persona 4, Shenmue, or Deadly Premonition, then I'd say that this series is totally worth checking out, simply because it offers the same quirky, tony, explory type of thing that those games are known for. And also, it's just one hell of a story to experience as well. Things like the music, the voice acting, the writing, and the cinematography are all good enough to stand on their own. Seriously, the the way the story unfolds and how it's presented could totally survive as a movie. And that's something I can only say about a handful of games, even those that try very hard to be like movies often end up stilted. But I'm legitimately blown away by how good the game's plot is.